Welcome back. South Africa's parliament has received a request from the Public Protector's Office that the Central Bank's constitutional mandates be changed. Public Protector Busiwane Mongwane, the head of the South African Anti Graft Agency, wants the Central Bank's mandate changed from maintaining currency and price stability to acting in the interests of ordinary citizens. Parliament will consider the report through its usual internal processes and determine an appropriate course of action. In the meantime, Barclays Africa Group Limited, the South African banks formerly known as APSA, will go to the country's high court to challenge a decision that it should pay the government 1.125 billion rand, that's about $86 million, over the apartheid era acquisition of Bangkok Limited. The Johannesburg-based bank said in a statement that this is due to numerous misrepresentations representations and factual inaccuracies which form the basis of the public protector's findings and what they submit are the rational and unreasonable legal conclusions in the report. Public protector uh, Busewane said on Monday that Barclays Africa on Julie benefited from state support when it bought bank up from its shareholder Sanlam Limited in 1992 after the central bank helped keep the lender afloat. Luanda, the capital of Angola, has regained a top sport as the world's most expensive city for expatriates, pushing Hong Kong back into the second place. The claim is made in the 23rd Annual Cost of Living Survey carried out by their advisory firm Mesa. Tokyo, Zurich and Singapore comprise the rest of the top five. London has fallen to just 30th place in the ranking, partly because of the pound's devaluation and other big UK cities also dropping down the rankings. The annual survey looks at more than just the cost to uh, export rates of renting and um, apartment or housing. It examines the cost of 200 items in each place, including housing, transport, clothes, food and uh, entertainment. Nigerians have continued to express their displeasure over the current economic situation, even as the government makes efforts to pull Africa's biggest economy out of recession. Nigeria is battling a currency crisis brought on by low oil prices, which tipped its economy into recession and created chronic dollar shortages. Nigerian entrepreneur Harrison Akadidi runs a PR firm that books celebrities for high-profile events. It's an expensive business, charging up to 3,000 US dollars for local personalities and up to 100,000 for international ones. When Akadidi started two years ago, no price was too high, but by October last year, he went from 20 bookings per month to seven. He has put off business for a while because he doesn't have enough money to secure the celebrities. Early 2016, we, we had a you know, a, a down record of bookings coming in. Then when you do this research on that, you realize a lot of people can't actually afford, you know, to book these celebrities like they used to, uh, 2015 backwards, you know, and not, not just that. For organizations like us where we get to pay our own bills in dollars, it's just incredible for us because that way, all the bills just go, goes, goes up for us. And not just, uh, you know, it goes like uh, three times a regular, you know, fee that we usually pay. It's not just businesses that are struggling. Hundreds of residents recently marched through Lagos to express their frustration over a sputtering economy, lack of jobs, and a soaring cost of living. I'm an ordinary Nigerian. I'm an oppressed Nigerian. I'm a frustrated Nigerian because the system is not working. At some point, we must ask ourselves that what has caused us to be in this present state? Is it because Nigerians are not talking enough? Is it because the leaders have the power to keep oppressing us? No, it is simple because Nigerians are indifferent. And our indifference gets to an extent where we will find expression. Where the paralyzed will eventually stand for something. Where the drunk will eventually say something. Where even the deaf will have to listen to something. It comes out somehow, some way. There must be a station where we are doing that. The acting president, Yemi Oshimbajo, signed the 2017 budget into law, with Abuja planning record spending to bring Nigeria out of recession. 
Nigeria unveiled a sweeping economic recovery plan in March, including measures to reduce its dependence on oil and to relax foreign exchange restrictions. But economists have expressed skepticism over the government's scheme, known as the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, saying it amounts to little more than a wish list rather than a roadmap offering concrete solutions. Nigeria is a funny nation because a country that finds itself in this situation we find ourselves would have come up with a comprehensive economic roadmap that is unconventional to look at how can we get out of this? Not just get out of this, but permanently move the economy in the, in a direction that we create jobs, that will be industrial economy, and also to diversify the economy and look inward. But the problem is that nothing has been done. Annual inflation is at 16.25%, and the United Nations estimates that 70% of the population live on a dollar a day. Nigeria's infrastructure financing is challenging as a result of the limited domestic sub uh, substitution. An arm of the World Bank, Africa Finance Corporation, has been financing major projects and is now looking to fund more projects in the local currency. The chief executive, Mr. Andrew Ali, gave these details at a forum in Lagos recently. Uh, in the last couple of years, I think it's fair to say that with the exception of possibly the Azura uh, power project, there haven't been really that many new large-scale infrastructure projects uh, that have uh, taken off. I'm sure I've missed uh, one or two, uh, but I, I think that's, uh, that's a fair statement uh, to make. And this is obviously uh, due to the fact that uh, the economy has contracted um, uh, people's ability to pay, including the government's ability to pay, which is uh, an off-taker, has, has gone down. Uh, in the power sector, which obviously is, uh, is, the, um, is one of the leading areas where we need investment, the uh, inherent, um, shall we say, uh, structural flaws in, in, in how that sector was, have been exacerbated because of the shortage of, uh, of, of, of income in the economy. And you know, that has driven uh, the sector to where it is today. Andrew Ali, the CEO of Africa Finance Corporation. And that's it on the program today. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Chimizie Obi Iwabo.